rolling. What is happening in time in this world right now? What are we doing with our time, with the time we have? The moments, the moments are birds. Flying above the hot earth on the breath of time. suppose the trick is once the bamboo cracks and you hear the crow and all that is and isn't what you know and all that glitters isn't what you show and you raise up and you pick up and you discard and you move begin to calm and stand by understanding, by overstanding. And you begin to calm and stand the machinations, the machine, the mechanisms of the doing around you. And through the eyes of the eagle, you're able to see that the squares push their way into the round all day. That even a painting is a wicked way to say you won't taste the wind through your ears today. And so we're led to believe that if we learn to bereave and learn to stack it high enough that the winds won't matter. Just some sort of disjointed clatter. And we're taught to make our own reality out of the banality of all the shit we see and choose to be. And we still go home to a sarcophagus. And we wake up to a corpse. So the biggest thing is relating. Seeing those seven parts in everything you are. Seeing a hair in a tree. And a flea and a bee. And a you and a me. The root of it is discarding the insulatory factors, self-medicated and premeditated. And ultimately propagated. And instead rely upon self as sovereign 
if you can't do something, find a relative. But make that a relative. Don't go and take. Don't go take the sweet without the relationship. Or she'll make you pay in the end. Watch out for praying to your relatives if the only thing you're related to are thorns, thistles, chickens, pigs, and turkeys. Instead, seek the indigenous roots. Fan that fire. Find it water. Connect those things and allow yourself to wait to sit under that shade of that tree. That's your two well. Marshalling of the troops is the maintaining of the roads. The loopholing of the loops is the disbursement of loads. The enforcement of codes. The achievement of modes. Constantly derided and chided the simple, humble, Song of the Frogs and Toads. day where I heard it, John Wayne got his ass kicked. But that ain't the way their history wrote the tisket and tasket. We still can't get over them raping grandma in the casket. So they say to me, so Starkey, why were you and your friends those little wannabe G's? <laughs> Bitches, because the Jesuits made us bow on wounded knees. Expected us for cavities each and every way you please. You're 
your soul, your mind, your being on these things just kind of sees. What is it that finally frees? I know I ain't gonna trouble you long. And put on a mantle or hum it all day long. Or shove it up your ass, either way. I wrote the words to my own song. Everyone knows, I suppose. The two pox the rose that grew through concrete. Listen here though, I ain't that sweet. So I'm gonna have to run or go down by the gun. When a punk ass bitch ass cop yells, HALT! Cause I'm the dandelion that grew through the Through the crack in your asphalt said. First time anywhere. That kind. So then these things, if we relate to them, means we sit with them a minute, we look at how they really are. Just as there are so many hills, there are so many trees, there are so many blades of grass, there are even so many sticks, you can't just paint a stick. 
There are certain sticks. There are certain blades of grass. It's a quantifiable, qualifiable number. But the insulatory factors that perpetuate this thing, this ER, this gross beast eating nations, giving those that it ingests a promise of a chance at the trough. It's getting to the point some of these people only need to watch the trough on television. They don't even need their own chance at it anymore. They are selling cheaper and cheaper. Those whose husbands go and buy the brown girls cheaply sell themselves cheaply for thrills. It's a hilarious self-perpetuating reflection of itself. Those on the top deck in the penthouse suites of the narrow and hardly buoyant and overly buoyant at times capitalist ship curse and bemoan the oil and stench of the ballast below the waterline where nobody sees below the hold of where they keep the slaves the machinations of this thing even below that is the ballast where the rats are only rats and what refuse through the force of gravity lands there is there. And yeah, it's the most important part of the ship, other than the structure itself, is that ballast. And that's the homeless, the despised. I don't mind being despised, I don't even mind being, being displaced. And this is important. This is probably the most important thing I'm going to say. I don't mind being despised, and I don't mind being displaced. But what I am adverse to is being replaced. That if a starling displaces a woodpecker, that it, he then acts as a mockingbird in lieu of that woodpecker's life. Presents himself as a woodpecker, knowing nothing about being a woodpecker. Knowing only about usurping the woodpecker. Truly, that's the relative, I think, that most people pray to other than if non-indigenous folks pray to their ancient relatives, the only things they have here are limited on this continent. It's a limited array. One of the most widespread are the pre-assembled chicken and pigs and turkeys. The wild ones, luckily, are like the starlings, and I think they're called the house sparrows. But the thing about the starlings is they're quite invasive. They mock everything. They can sing like anything. They're the ones that sound like R2-D2. They're the loud ones. They're the ones that are in the big flocks. They're an endangered species in Europe. They're an invasive species here. If we cannot look at nature and see it reflected in everything, in two-legged too, then, then we're being liars and we're being a disservice then to, I think the term was reasoning. Rastafarians use the term reasoning when they smoke their marijuana and sit and talk. But you gotta bleed for this thing. You've gotta give, you've got to need it for a reason other than longevity, which is fear of death, which is fear of life, which is guilty conscience, which is, uh, there's diseases of affluence that even the m most destitute indigenous person now manifests. Diabetes is a disease of affluence. These diseases of affluence, they're the hardest to uh, address because the affluent never gets what they need the most and that's <coughs> humility. And that humility comes only when you need it, when you absolutely need it and you can't step back out into the shade, when you have to absolutely be when you say that most people can't imagine sitting for four days. No Lakota male could imagine being called a Wichasha without doing that. He had to put on a dress and go cook. Some had the proclivity and they were allowed to do that. Some were made to do that because they wouldn't do those men things. He had to do that at least to be a man, to be a Wichasha. Face yourself. There are stories of them, boys being so scared they got tied down at 
but you need that when you're a symbiotic unit living in a larger world where there's bears at the watering hole not um, a microwave not those damned ants you know <laughs> yeah. counters it's all bundle making tables chairs they're all enemies of the state the state of consciousness square making if these squares weren't perpetuated the round would just overrun it in three short years and that's what we need to prepare for that's what we need to think for are those ones that would benefit immediately from the cessation of this because they're the ones that can live with this the rest are just pull yourself out of being one of them. You know? You could be an organic one of them. A green one of them. A philanthropist one of them. You could be giving blood. And still be one of them. If you're only about self-preservation. Self-centric. You've got to find roots. You can't... You can clip leaves of plants and they'll refine their roots if they're allowed the proper nutrients and conditions. They don't choose what they're going to be. They manifest what they are. And if we're not allowed to come and stand that in ourselves, we never, ever have anything but imperialistic impositions upon the rest of the world that we call liberty when, it, when we do it ourselves. That's the problem, is a disrelation that individualization causes. Freedom, Russell Means always says, is freedom to be responsible. That's a deep thing until you think about a man that's thinking about naturally being related to everything. So you've got to embrace those starlings and those chickens and those turkeys and see that in the people around you. They fight like that. You, tur them chickens, you might laugh at them, but you let one loose in the kitchen once, pissed. Now, if you can remember her, then you know who she is. He's a pig, same way. You see it in people. You see the starlings in people. The freer ones, the healthier ones, they're at best starlings. You know? It's really mimicking snarling. And after they're gone, that's all wickedness. And those are the nice ones. They're the nice ones. That's the terrible thing. You know? That's the terrible truth. That's why people don't go farther than you guys are asking. Because being related, when you guys have it made, you know. I walk across town, I wonder if the cops are going to jack me. You know. You guys walk across town, they're making sure you're not getting jacked. Maybe they'll pass you by again, hoping to catch somebody jacking you, and they're hero boy next. You know, they're, they're, they're fucking sweeping the sidewalks for you right now, some way. That's, a, that's the thing, is that affluence, you've got to strip that away and see. Some of the most carnivorous people are the, the um, vegan, the good vegan people. They're the most carnivorous because it costs the most people for that person to live that way with all his and her um, rare earth minerals that are in very contentious places to mine. They're heavily based on that. I know there's people in all kinds of uh, music that go solar, but that's very, you know, sure, you can go solar, but what if, you know, you gotta think about everybody. When I was growing up, if you got a treat, you never made anybody wish. Somebody got you McDonald's, you downed it, you never made anybody wish. Or otherwise, you thought of everybody. You lit a cigarette, where I'm from, you just, I got out of the joint, I lit a cigarette, and I pass it. They look at me like I was crazy, you know, or if somebody's smoking, and I was like, oh, ooh, never mind. Are they drinking coffee? And you think, because I come from a communal place where you always think of everybody. And it doesn't matter how many people are there, your mind just naturally goes there. You go from yourself, two people, to eight people for supper, you still don't have anything more than you had anyway, and there ain't no thing. It's just the way it is, Zen. That teaches you true time. This martial time. Quit listening to white music. Honest to God, man. Martial music. It's all martial. <laughs> Listen to anything tribal, anything less than chants. All those things that are not martial, staccato music. Because 
the imposition of father time on the best wall of every domicile and business and edifice everywhere. Father time gets the best spot, you know. If you can cast that out, you can begin to truly mend. Once you mend, some of those parts can even renew. That's that youth you're talking about. Not everything can renew, a lot of it can only mend. But if you only heal, you're going to be so scarred, you're useless anyway. So you need to find things that renew. Uh, but that's the sacrifice then. The giving, the relating to something. The sacrificing something. The bleeding for it. Otherwise, it's a taking and it's going to offset something. You know, it might never ever bother you. But still then, you know what I mean? Yeah. How tens of uh, many people less fortunate than you, is it going to have to bother them to, for it not to bother you? See, it's a vicious thing. Right. And you can stay insulated from all that all day and have the nicest life in your whole history. Be the best guy and, and still do that. Burn 10 brown children every day. Literally, you know, screaming right now, you know. Nothing's metaphoric. Nothing's a um, dress rehearsal. None of it's a run through. This is all the big show. We're running out of time right now, but we're walking with her. Wokpe, that time. She was manifested on 512 this year. I was walking around with a dream, one of the few dreams I had, but I told Henry Houston this, and I told the boys this. Wogi Hamble Okorokichi Api, I told Denise. I told Desha. Desha, my Takoja, her name's really uh, Wokpe Yuhawi. She did her woman coming of age ceremony on the res during a Sundance. So she's one of the few true women I know. One of the things I know that I need to do is make her her bundle. Because in those bundles, you invest things and they're real. So I eat chicken bones. I learned that from a uh, um, raccoon. Use those chicken bones and have that chicken power going crazy. It's a mess, especially for the invoker of the chicken power. At any rate, um, Wok Pei Yuhanwe came up to me with a bag. It was a beaded pipe bag, but not beaded on leather, it's all beads. And it was white with red piping. And on this side was a five. And there was a heart. And on this side was a bunny. And there was a 12. And the bunny is kind of like the Playboy bunny, but his ears were long. One of them box. And I was going around talking about 512, 512. On 512 of this year in Texas was born a white buffalo calf. One of the dreams I had was such a powerful dream. I think I was actually there on the res. All these things will have to go into other times, you know, but there's some things you ask that just because it's me, who else is going to have this other than the guy that went to the joint for growing up in a feud? I went through the Rapid City flood, through a second floor of a flooded house where everything else was washing by when I was six. I haven't even realized how much that affects me until the other night. I thought, wow, that really changed my life right there. Because you see nothing but the thing going on all night, and it's humongous. It changes you instantly. Washed all the Indians away in yeah, the city. Saw my dad die when I was 11. Went into a family feud when I was in my teens, being an honor student in junior high. I saw my brother shot for the first time when he was 15, I was 14. He went on being shot over and over. Went to plane continuing went to prison. Went to all those things, but I was never really defeated no matter what, because I was always standing for something. Warren, my brother, taught us what the Pledge of Allegiance meant when we were in sixth grade in Mr. Fine's class in General Beatles School, elementary. And I was like, whoa, they had me saying that? So Warren wouldn't stand, we wouldn't stand. Mr. Fine came up and bounced Warren off the wall. Of all things, under, a, as I say, Abe Lincoln's grisly visage fell from the wall. You know? He's the one that hanged 38 Dakota men. Warren looked at us crying. He said, come on guys, let's get out of here. And he goes running out. We went and told his dad, his dad went up there, chased Mr. Fine around, you know. 
made him kiss ass, you know. Mm. And we never had to say the fucking Pledge of Allegiance. And it wasn't AIM that did it. It wasn't any, it wasn't Marcus Garvey. It wasn't Malcolm X, you know. It was Warren Wayne Rich, you know. It was Lightning Eagle, you know. I've spoke about Warren elsewhere. I really think that this is worth putting something truly together about, you know, because it's a thing really going on. And so then it's totally disrespected because I have no money. Why? Because it's the way we roll, you know. This is the way we roll. When you really do it, then you really have those things. You know? I'm not gonna jump into a Subaru and drive away, you know, unless it's a friend. Yeah. And we're just gonna wait until something comes, you know. Our buddy Matt's coming, we'll land in Montana and we'll have our Sundance and we'll do our thing. But we have this teepee, we have our friend Diane, we have our friend Anton. We have the relatedness, you know. I, you know, as I was playing, you could see everything relate. It's being, talking to those things. It's telling me things now, that things are moving, things are shifting. If you just relate to those things, it's simple. You lose yourself looking for the eagles when it. When the little goldfinches are there, messenger of the eagle. His name is uh, the eagle wound. That's as good as the eagle coming. You know? And you'll miss that. He's, he's calming at a bird feeder, you know? If, if you be calming with him, a lot of things that are common are the most important things. You know, the most important. Your image, your mirror, your reflection, your roots. Embrace that. Pick it up. Find it. Grab a shield tongue to play your roots through it. Why doesn't someone say, I'm Irish as a motherfucker and it's a holy hunk? Yeah. You know? And says, so, and I think I might have a, you know, Indian in the closet, you know, tied up in the attic, you know, mm -hmm. in the chest of drawers. You know? Yeah. And, and just haunt that. Funny thing is, conversely, in all the great music, I see nothing but Indians. You'd shake some of those trees, not only lynched slaves come out.